Genius back with you once again, and here it is, the final show that we're going to do before the presidential election, the last commentary that we're going to do before Tuesday's big election. The, the next time we talk to each other, uh, the election will be in the history books, so uh, we want to go through this time through, this last uh, commentary, if you will, and give you kind of my final thoughts and predictions, and uh, maybe even give you a little bit of hint of, of which way you should go if you're one of the few undecided voters left out there. Incidentally, some housekeeping about this show. You've heard me mention in the past that we were going to be adding a uh, audio podcast to this, uh, and that will be happening. We uh, are in the final stages right now of getting everything set up in terms of a website to host it and everything, so that should be done probably within the next week or thereabouts, and then when we do that, uh, we'll be ready to go, so you'll be getting the information here very soon in terms of uh, the Travis Cook podcast and the place where each and every week uh, what I call the extremist nation will be able to meet and discuss the events of the day. But back to this election and back to this coming Tuesday. You know, I I'm struck uh, not only for myself but for a lot of other conservatives that I talk with uh, quite frequently that uh, this upcoming election on Tuesday, that this last few days leading up to it, almost uh, gives you a feeling akin to Christmas Eve, back when you were a kid. You know, back when you, you, you'd be hanging out at Christmas Eve all in anticipation to Christmas and the next day, and you'd, you'd be thinking, hey, I really hope I get that shiny new bike under the tree tomorrow, and you know, maybe all the signs point to the fact that you're probably going to get that bike, and you're really excited about it, but you know, in the back of your mind, there's a small remote chance that you're not going to get the shiny new bike and you're going to get some horrendous looking sweater instead. I think that's where conservatives are right now in terms of this upcoming election. All the signs point to a Romney victory. But in the back of our head, there's this thought that is there something somewhere that could go wrong? Is there some kind of voter fraud or God only knows what else that could, that could end up blowing this up? And so there's this weird mix of anticipation and excitement on one hand and... Uh, dread, for lack of a better word, on the other hand, of what could possibly go wrong. It's a very interesting mix of emotions that we have right now that I think are very similar to what we used to have on, on Christmas Eve as a kid. Uh, first thing I want to get out of the way, I, I've heard for the last week and a half or so a lot of people talk about this Hurricane Sandy or Superstorm Sandy or whatever they're calling it now, and how that was going to have a big effect on the election. I don't believe that Sandy will have much of an effect at all on this election, the way some people were trying to hype it up that it would. And that's for a couple of reasons. First of all, the storm itself has already passed and is long gone. And uh, so people are now starting to kind of dig out and get things uh, put back together again. That's going to be a long process, of course, and our thoughts are with everybody out there in the East Coast who's going through it. But uh, things are starting to churn a little bit, so I think people will largely be able to get out to the polls. And uh, there won't be much of a problem that way from what I can see. And the second reason, let's face it, the, the two states that had most of the direct hit with this thing were New York and New Jersey. And I think everybody worth their salt would tell you that New York and New Jersey were going to be Obama states all along. That nothing would happen there that would uh, flip either one of those states to Romney. I don't think that anybody... Uh, would seriously entertain the thought that Romney could steal one of those states. If he did, especially New York, it would flip the electoral map on, it, on, on its ear, but I can't see that happening. And while there are a lot of stories coming out of Staten Island that, uh, about lack of FEMA response and disastrous sort of things that are as bad as Katrina or worse, let's face it, the mainstream media has largely kept those stories under wraps. So on a national basis, this won't really hurt Obama, but it won't really help him either because, you know, no one is really been able to say, and even the media has not been able to say, that Obama handled this so phenomenally well that it's better than what any president before him has ever done. They can't say that. Obama's effectively, as far as the media is concerned, has done what you would expect any president to do. So nothing so outstanding that if you were voting for Mitt Romney before, you're suddenly going to change your vote. You know, it's not really a national issue, it doesn't seem like, and out here in flyover country, not really that big of a deal at all. If you were voting for Romney before, you haven't seen anything through the storm that would make you switch your vote. Nothing about Obama was that impressive, and nothing would indicate to you that Mitt Romney wouldn't have handled it as well or better than Obama did. So I really don't think Sandy will be much of an issue. Okay, let's do some predictions about the election. The, the kind of the fun things you do before a football game or an election or anything else. Let's give you some predictions here. I'm going to try to forecast for you exactly what I think is going to happen Tuesday. I have three things. First of all, number one, I don't believe that Barack Obama will win any states that he did not win in 2008. In other words, if a state went for John McCain in 2008, 
I think it's off the table for Barack Obama this time through. He's going to have to get his 270 electoral votes only from the states that he won last time. Number two, I predict that Barack Obama will be shut out of the Southeast. That means that Mitt Romney will take all the states that John McCain did in the Southeast back in 2008. Plus, I'm predicting he will pick up Florida, North Carolina, and Virginia. That will completely shut Obama out of the Southeast United States. And then thirdly, because of the first two things I just mentioned, I think number three, that says that Mitt Romney will win this election. I am predicting a Romney win. Okay, what about the Electoral College? You want to do a little pontificating on the numbers there? Uh, I did go to a, a website called 270towin.com and played around with an electoral map there, and you can do the same. And what I tried to do, I tried to envision the worst case scenario for Mitt Romney. I tried to envision, you know, the, the, the worst possible scenario for Romney and, and, and the most losing states that he could possibly lose. And I came up with these numbers. In that close to the vest kind of way that I did it, in that conservative way, conservative mathematically, that I did it, I came up with this prediction that Mitt Romney would win the election with 295 electoral votes to 243 for Barack Obama. Now, like I say, that's playing it close to the vest. That's a worst case scenario. I don't think it would take very much at all for that margin to be quite a bit larger. I don't think it would take very much to make this actually go towards landslide territory. I mean, the numbers I put together, I, I gave Pennsylvania to Obama. You know, I give a few other states to him that are actually toss-ups. So if Romney goes out there and wins Pennsylvania and somehow takes Michigan, this thing could start to really snowball and Obama could get embarrassed. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I recognize the possibilities there. But of course, all of those are just predictions and something we kind of do for fun in anticipation of this thing kind of the American pastime, you know, we always like to predict things before they happen, and we're no different around here. But I did want to take the last few minutes of this presentation, the last few minutes of our final commentary before the election, to tell you why you should vote on Tuesday, and if you are one of the few undecideds left out there, why you should vote against Barack Obama. When you really sit and think about it, this election is not simply between two men. It's not simply between Barack Obama and Mitt Romney. And it's not even really between the two political parties when you really think about it. I mean, even the most partisan observer, myself included, I'll tell you, I'm as partisan as anybody. Even the most partisan observer would likely tell you that they have some significant issues with what their selected party stands for at times. So, you know, even though I'm a staunch Republican, I have my misgivings with them at times. A lot of staunch Democrats have some misgivings with them at times. So, really, this isn't even about party versus party or man versus man. Instead, this is an election between two competing philosophies of what America should be. One philosophy that emphasizes the collective over the individual, a philosophy that's largely represented by Barack Obama, versus one philosophy that emphasizes the individual over the collective. And in this case, that philosophy is being represented by Mitt Romney. Now, while that distinction might seem like political science 101, and while that distinction is at play in every election to some degree, I still don't think we've seen any election, at least in my lifetime, that better illustrates this difference and better illustrates this battle as much as 2012 does. You know, when you think about it in previous elections, especially recently, both candidates in either party would, would toil in a bit of a gray area, for a lack of a better term, between those two philosophies. They wouldn't be all in on one side or the other. You know, Bill Clinton for all of his version of class warfare, rarely would castigate business owners or job creators the way that Barack Obama does. Other side of the coin, George W. Bush did believe, much to the chagrin of many of us who actually voted for him and followed him, Bush did believe that the federal government had some role to play in the betterment of society. So there were some type of issues that most candidates in recent elections would go into that dreaded gray area on. But not so much this time. The messages of both candidates in the run-up to this election have largely stayed out of that gray area. They've largely stayed out of the center. And I think that's a reflection of the American people as a whole. We as a nation have also begun to move out of that gray area, have also begun to move out of that center and choose up sides in this great philosophical debate. A lot of us have gone more towards the conservative movement, more towards the right. But yes, there are people out there who have left the center and gone more towards the left. I think the center in this nation is shrinking. We are choosing up sides, and I think this election has been a reflection of that. So the question before you is this. Are you in favor of an individual determining his own fate? Or are you in favor of the government determining the fate of the collective, and by extension, determining your individual fate as they see fit? 
That is a single question before the electorate here in 2012. When you look at all the issues we're talking about, whether it's taxation or Obamacare or the environment or, or, or energy or any of these things, they all seem to come down to that question at the root. That, that debate and that question is involved in every single issue that's on the table this time through. Now, Obama has proven what side he's on. From his comments in 2008 about how we should spread the wealth to implementing a health care program that is a thinly veiled attempt to redistribute financial resources and to take over the health care decisions of society as a whole, to his admonishment of successful business owners telling them that you didn't build that, to his constant cries that the wealthy should contribute, using the air quotes, contribute more to the tax coffers, while those in the lower end of the, of the spectrum contribute nothing, either in taxation or to society as a whole, it is abundantly clear Obama does not view individual achievement and success as the cornerstones of American society. Instead, he seems to view them as some sort of problem, or at the very least, something that the government can determine more fairly than the free market can. Therefore, if you believe that your own achievement and your own success and the success of your family should be a higher priority to you than the perceived success of some vague collective, and really, whom among us doesn't believe that? If you believe that, then you have literally no choice but to vote against Barack Obama. You've got to pull the lever for Mitt Romney. The choice is more clear in this election than in any other in recent memory. The distinction is more clear and more solid than it's ever been in all the elections that I've been participating in, going back to 1992. And frankly, we haven't even talked about Barack Obama ignoring the security of Americans in Libya in an effort not to upset our enemies and ignoring an act of war in the process, nor have we talked about Barack Obama attempting to speak to and appeal to the pseudo-victims of society at the expense of everybody else. I mean, seriously. Have you ever heard Obama claim that the successful Americans will get anything in return for their contributions and for their further subsidizing of the lower classes? I mean, my God, even when Bill Clinton was in office, when, he would, when he'd try to nail the rich, he would at least try and convince them that they'd get something in return out of it. Barack Obama doesn't even have the class and respect to try and do that. It's clear that Obama is not the president of those who believe in America and what it has always stood for, and he never has been. He is only the president of those who feel America should be something far different than what it's always been. When he said he wanted change back in 2008, he really meant it. He meant that the very tenets and pillars of our society needed to change. And his actions over the last four years have reinforced that point. Now, Mitt Romney's not my favorite guy. He's not my favorite politician. If you've watched his show for any length of time at all, you know that. If you're watching this show during the primary season, you darn sure know that. And it's true that I would much rather have a Herman Cain running in this election, or a Michelle Bachman running in this election, or a Rick Santorum running in this election, or maybe even a Newt Gingrich running in this election. But the bottom line is, it's Mitt Romney versus Barack Obama. Those are the only two options we have. And out of those two choices, Mitt Romney is head and shoulders above this man, Barack Obama, who hates individual success and who hates America for what it has always been. So if you believe in this nation, and you believe in our culture, and you believe in the very philosophical underpinnings that have girded us for so many years, the very society that has become the greatest in the world, bar none, then you have no choice. You have to vote for Mitt Romney, and I'll be proud Tuesday to stand alongside you while I do this, the same thing. Barack, get the moving vans ready, baby. You're going back to Chicago. That's it for this week. We'll see you after the election, hopefully having a little bit of a party. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next time.